Hi, this is Ed Rushman with Whitestone Journal. I'm going to talk today a little bit about reading dead people. So obviously I don't mean actually reading them, like exhuming and all that, but you know, a lot of dead people have written things and said things that were pretty interesting and it isn't often valued anymore. Right now everybody wants something that's really current and novel and they're looking for whatever is hip and all that. And there's a few advantages to reading dead people. Uh, one of them is that there's really a little bit less pride in it. Uh, if you tell somebody that you read Thomas More's Utopia, I'm not necessarily recommending it, but it's, you know, it's seen as a good book in some ways. A lot of people won't know what it is now. Uh, that's uh, These years of the educational system have managed to purge out a pretty good number of good books. Um, but, you know, I just read something today because it was uh, the day that he was executed was today. And somebody said, well, why would you read some 15th or 16th century philosopher? Uh, he's got nothing to say to us today. You should be reading somebody modern, somebody that's now. And there you go. So you can read him. You can get good stuff out of it. But no one's going to praise you for it because, uh, you know, it's he's an old dead dude. That's their point. Uh, that's part of it. The other thing is that sometimes, C.S. Lewis says that sometimes what a, a time needs or a generation needs is, uh, is an idea that's out of fashion. You know, right now there's just certain things that are hot, and those are the things that you can find easily. But if you want the thing that you need, it may not be available right now. It may be that you have to go back to somebody that's been dead a long time, uh, that was still talking about it, maybe when it was the fashion back then. Uh, but now it's not, and so you can't get anything that's uh, current. Uh, but the other thing about it that I think is really important is that not just reading live authors, not avoiding live authors so much, but a lot of what we read is what gets posted on Facebook or Twitter or something else, you know, and... and and often, it's very limited on what it even says. It's written for fast consumption, and it's not written in a leisurely manner. So, and it's also things now that we read, you know, we like it, and our friends like it, and everybody goes, oh, that's good that you liked it. Uh, there's a lot of social validation associated with reading certain things now and agreeing on it that, you know, you don't get with dead authors. If you read somebody that wrote way back and they've been long gone, you may not even tell anybody, but you get the benefits of it. Uh, but there's no relationship, and this is the thing. There's no validation coming through it. You can look at it and say, well, they say the same thing I already believe, so that makes me feel good about myself, and okay. But a lot of the time that isn't the case. Sometimes we get things that are a surprise. I would hope so. It's far better to read somebody we disagree with. Uh, but anyway, the idea is that we don't get any validation out of it. There, that's an interaction with somebody's thought process that doesn't validate us. They have nothing to give us except their thoughts, and they're not there to approve us. So we have no pressure to agree with them because they don't know if we agree. They aren't going to give us anything back. Uh, so it means that the ideas bear and, and, and unconfused with validation and social pressures, uh, those ideas are just there for us to approve, reject, embrace, incorporate, uh, refute, do anything we want with it, and there's no price to be paid, uh, positive or negative. There's no cost to us if whatever we do, we just get the ideas uh, completely without any pressure to conform or anything else. That's got an awful lot of value to me. So something to think about. Go read somebody that's been dead a long time. This is Ed Rushman for Whitestone Journal.